Welcome to another 10 Minute Thursday Yearbook Edition. For this week's video, I'll be going over photography basics. I'll be covering ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. These are the three main camera settings I feel are highly important to understand and really get to know if you want to get, become a photographer and start shooting. So let's start off with ISO. ISO is the sensitivity of your camera sensor. And so if you used to shoot black and white film or color film, you used to actually have to buy the roll already preset with ISO you wanted to shoot with. So I have some film right here. This is T-Max 100 film, which basically means it's 100 ISO. There's 400 ISO and so forth. So you had already pre-know what type of ISO you were gonna use because of the environment you're gonna shoot at. But nowadays using digital cameras, even phone cameras, you can adjust that on the fly which is really nice. And some cameras do have a higher range of ISO. You can have a camera that goes from ISO 100 to 6,800 to even bigger than that. Like mine can go up to 128,000, which is a lot to go with. But what does ISO do for you and what does it do for your camera? Um, basically what it does is as you increase your ISO, you are gonna get a brighter image. It's gonna allow more light to the sensor, so you're gonna get a very brighter image. But the downside to that is you are going to get more grain, also known as film grain, in your images or noise. You're going to get all these little dots. It's going to kind of sometimes distract the photo depending on what you're shooting. So generally, if you're going to be shooting indoors, you're going to use probably an ISO 400, maybe higher depending on the situation. But right when I step outside, I'm going to want to bring that all the way down to ISO 100, especially if it's a bright, sunny day. If it's dark, it's cloudy, then of course you're gonna bring that ISO up. But if you're shooting during the daylight around 10 a.m., then you're gonna to wanna to use the lowest ISO as possible. That way you don't get as much noise and grain in your images. But like I was mentioning before, as you increase your ISO, you do get more light. But as you decrease it, there is less light that goes to the sensor. So here's just some samples I wanna kind of show you to show you the difference as you're increasing your ISO, what it kind of does to your image. This first one I'm pulling up is ISO 100. You notice it's very clean, very consistent. As we increase, now we move over to 320. You start to see a little more noise, especially up in the top area, a little bit around the Nikon camera, but not too much. Keep going, get a little more. This is now ISO 640. Now we got ISO 1000, ISO 4000, ISO 8000, and ISO 16,000. And you can really tell in 16,000 all the noise that is up here on the wall, on the top of the image, even around both these cameras. And so if I was to compare these side by side, ISO 100 to 16,000, you can see a major difference. And so that's why I recommend whenever you can use a lower ISO, try your best to just because you don't want that noise. But sometimes you're gonna be in situations you can't help in, that's totally fine. But just make note to constantly look at your ISO, see where you're at and what kind of environment you're shooting in to choose the right ISO for that setting. So the next thing I wanna go over is aperture. So aperture, also known as your f-stop, controls your depth of field of your image. So like my video you're seeing right now, I have a really blurred background. That's because I want all the focus drawn to me and not really what's behind me. And that's the same thing on why you use your aperture. It's you want your viewers to pay attention to your subject or a specific thing in your photo. So that's why a lot of time when people take portrait photos, they like to blur out the background just because they don't want people to get distracted, see what's going on, all that stuff. So as you use a lower f-stop such as 1.2, 2.8, so forth, you're gonna really get that blurred background. As you increase it, it's gonna start getting some things more in focus. You'll increase it because maybe it's a group of people, you have three, five, 10 people that you need in focus. You're gonna start increasing it to like F5, F6, F8. That way you still get some blurred background, but the people in the foreground are in focus. Um, then you're gonna increase it even higher. And that's really when you see those really sharp landscape photos or photos of the moon where it's very sharp, everything's crystal clear, it is amazing. That's when you're starting to use your higher f-stop because you not only want your foreground in focus, but you also want your background in focus. So when figuring out your f-stop, you wanna make sure what it is that I wanna focus on. The other thing to note with f-stop is the lower the f-stop, the more light that goes in. 
And that's because you have a wider opening in your lens. As you increase your f-stop, that opening is going to get smaller, smaller, and smaller, meaning less light is able to reach the camera. So like I was mentioning before with ISO, sometimes you're going to have to increase your ISO. But in order to counteract that, if you have a lens that has a very low f-stop and you're allowed to shoot on that f-stop, that'll allow you to lower your ISO and not have to increase it as much because you're getting more of that light through your f-stop. The other thing to note with f-stop and aperture is if you're going out for the first time buying a camera, a lot of cameras come with standard kit lenses. Those lenses generally have a ratio f-stop. So there's, it's not really fixed. So what I mean by that is sometimes that lens will be like a 3.5 to a 5 f-stop. Meaning on occasion, depending on the lighting conditions, depending on where you're at, you may be able to get that 3.5, but it's not guaranteed the guarantee f-stop you'll always be able to get is f5, is gonna be your lowest. So generally that's when photographers go and buy other lenses that have a fixed aperture. That way they can always guarantee they can get a 2.8 or 1.2. And to kind of show you what I mean by depth of field and how things get sharper as you're increasing your f-stop and how things get more clear around your foreground and your background, here are a few examples. And so this one's first at f2.8, you know, it's really that middle pole that's in focus and the one right behind it. Then we increase the F4. Now that front pole in front of us kind of got a little more sharper. You can see it a little better, but still blurred out. We go to F8, it's getting a little more sharper. I can now even see the, the backlight stand. Go to F11. Now all four of those backlight stands are really in sharp and clear. Now this F16. So it's still not fully there, but it's still a lot clearer. You even got the door that's clear and even the holder that's holding the light stands is very clear and sharp. So if I was to go back to the 2.8 and compare this to the 16, you can see a huge difference on what is in focus, what is clear and what you can notice. And so that's why I said, when choosing your aperture, you wanna pick an aperture that really helps your subject. And the last thing I wanna go over is shutter speed. Shutter speed is the amount of time that your shutter is open. One thing I do enjoy about DSLRs over mirrorless is I can actually show you how that shutter works. And so right now, if I'm using a slow shutter, you see how it remains open a lot longer. As I increase that shutter, it starts moving faster, faster, and faster. So one thing I'd note with just going off of that is the faster your shutter speed is, the less light you're gonna get into the camera because it's not open long enough to get enough light. The slower the shutter is, the more light that can come into the camera. However, with shutter, you also have to take into consideration what is the subject you're shooting? Is it in place, sitting down, or is it in motion? If it's in motion, you're definitely gonna to wanna to use a faster shutter speed, such as 1 500th of a second, 1 1,000th, 1 2,000th second, just depends on how fast is it moving. Is it a person running, or is it a person driving a car? Um, then you can use slower ones, such as someone taking a portrait. You may use 1 200th of a second or 1 125th. Um, and then you can go lower. If you're going to go lower than 1 1 25th of a second, I highly recommend using a tripod, maybe leaning against a wall to help give you stabilization. Just because the lower you go, you are going to start running into camera shake if you don't have something very stable to hold the camera in place. Um, also, one thing that can help with camera shake and reduce that is having lenses that have image stabilization built in because they'll help reduce that blur and that camera motion for you, but they don't do everything. So I highly recommend using a tripod if you are going to start shooting lower. So let's recap. I went over three main settings, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. So with your ISO, the lower the ISO, the less light that goes in. The higher the ISO, more light goes in. Aperture, the lower the aperture, more light goes into the camera. The higher the aperture, less light that goes into the camera. Then you have shutter speed. The higher the shutter speed, the less light that goes in. The lower the shutter speed, the more light that goes in. And so all three of those really work together on helping you figure out what kind of exposure you're gonna use. So when I'm in a setting, let's say, I'm always gonna mess with my ISO first before I adjust my aperture or my shutter because normally I chose a shutter based off of my environment and I chose my aperture because this is what I want. I want a blurred background or I want everything sharp. So I normally mess with my ISO first. 
If that one's over, then I'll adjust my shutter speed to the lowest I possibly can and still get the quality photo I need. And then I'd move on to my aperture. But you can do it any which way, just whatever really works best for you. I really hope you enjoyed these 10 minutes. And I know there's a lot of other things I could have covered, such as rule of thirds, composition, but I feel like before you can even get into that, you do want to really understand these three basic camera settings. And one other quick tip, if you're still not sure how these all work, I do highly recommend maybe trying out the AV mode um, or TV mode or S if you're using Nikon. And what I mean by that is AV is aperture priority. So it allows you to adjust your aperture and your ISO and your shutter speed will automatically change for you. That way you're pretty much only playing around with two settings. And TV or S in Nikon is your shutter speed priority. So you get to adjust your shutter and your ISO and your aperture changes automatically for you. These are great ways just to kind of get in, start playing around and basically moving away from auto before you move your way to manual. So like I said, thank you for joining me today. If you guys have any questions, want to learn something different, want to know something else within the photography world or have other tips or tricks that have worked for you, please comment below. And I look forward to seeing you next week, Thursday. Have a great day.